This week, we got some major updates from the biggest names in tech. Apple is reportedly exploring acquisitions of two fast-rising AI companies. They've also promising a big step forward for Siri. NVIDIA says that the AI boom is still only in the beginning stages, even as investors worry about slowing sales. OpenAI is building one of the largest data centers in the world, in India, and Elon Musk is suing Apple and OpenAI, raising questions about the competition in the AI market. In this video, we'll break down each story, explain why it matters, and look at what it could mean for all of us. If you want to keep up with AI without the hype, hit subscribe and let's get into it. First, let's talk about Apple. According to Reuters, Apple has internally discussed buying Mistral AI and Perplexity AI. Mistral is based in France and in less than two years, it's become one of the leading tech companies in Europe. Their models are open source, meaning developers around the world can use them. They've been compared to companies like Anthropic and OpenAI, but with a European twist, a focus on openness and collaboration. Perplexity, on the other hand, is basically an AI-powered search engine. It's like Google, but built on top of large language models. You type a question, it doesn't just give you links, it gives you clear answers with sources cited. It's fast, easy to use, and growing quickly. Some people are even replacing Google with perplexity in their daily lives. Now, why would Apple want these companies? Well, Apple hasn't been seen as a leader in AI. They've integrated some machine learning features into the iPhone and Mac, but compared to ChatGPT or Gemini, Siri looks outdated. Acquiring Mistral and Perplexity would give Apple instant access to advanced models and a search tool that could transform Siri into something competitive again. And here's the bigger picture. Apple always talks about privacy. If they combine Perplexity's search with Apple's ecosystem, we could get a privacy-first alternative to Google, something millions of iPhone users would pay attention to. Of course, we don't know if Apple will actually make these deals. They've often explored acquisitions, but don't follow through. But the fact that they're even considering such large moves shows Apple is finally taking AI seriously. Now, let's talk Siri. Apple's engineering chief admitted what we all know. Siri has fallen behind. It struggles with complex questions, often misunderstands commands, and just as in compared to tools like ChatGPT. But here's the news. Apple says the upcoming Siri update will be a much bigger leap forward than expected. Instead of just handling simple commands, Siri may finally become capable of summarizing long articles, creating schedules, planning trips, and even holding useful conversations. These are the kind of things people have been doing with ChatGPT or Gemini instead. If Apple delivers, this could make Siri central again to the iPhone experience. Instead of being a backup assistant, it could become a daily tool people rely on. And when you think about Apple's reach, over a billion iPhones in use, that is a big deal. So one way or another, Siri is about to get smarter. The question is whether Apple can catch up fast enough to compete with companies that have been building in this space for years. Next, let's turn to NVIDIA. Their CEO, Jensen, said something important this week. The AI boom is far from over. Now, some investors were worried about after NVIDIA got a softer sales forecast. But Hung is clear. The long-term demand for AI infrastructure is still massive. He believes spending on AI data centers could reach trillions of dollars by 2030. Why does this matter? Because NVIDIA makes the chips that power almost every advanced AI model. OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropic's Cloud, Google's Gemini, they all run on NVIDIA hardware. In a way, NVIDIA isn't building AI apps. They're building the foundation. And when there's a gold rush, it's often the people selling shovels who make the most money. NVIDIA is that company right now. For everyday people, this matters because it explains why AI is showing up everywhere, in apps, in workplaces, even in entertainment. 
the chips behind the scene are what make it possible. And as demand grows, NVIDIA's influence grows with it. OpenAI is also expanding in a big way. According to Bloomberg, they're planning a massive new data center in India, one with at least one gigawatt of power. To put that into context, one gigawatt is enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes. This isn't just a data center, it's a super factory for AI. Why India? It offers cheaper energy, a growing base of skilled engineers, and it puts OpenAI closer to billions of users across Asia. This could lower costs and improve access to AI services for huge parts of the world. It also shows a bigger trend. AI is no longer just concentrated in Silicon Valley. We're seeing global expansion with projects in Europe, the Middle East, and now India. The AI industry is becoming a worldwide infrastructure business. And finally, Elon Musk, his company XAI, has filed a lawsuit against Apple and OpenAI. The lawsuit claims Apple gives OpenAI unfair advantages, especially through the App Store, and that this hurts competition. Musk argues the AI market is being locked up by a few players, and smaller companies, like his home, are being pushed out. This case could be significant. If Musk succeeds, it might force regulators to create more open competition in AI. That could mean more choices, faster innovation, and potentially lower costs for consumers. But if Apple and OpenAI continue to dominate, we could end up with fewer options and more closed ecosystems where a handful of companies control most of the technology. Either way, this lawsuit is worth watching closely. What do you think? Should Apple buy companies like Mistral and Perplexity? And will Musk's lawsuit actually open the market for more competition? Let me know in the comments. If you found this useful, please like the video, subscribe, and share with someone interested in where AI is heading. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.